BBD, Bobby Broadcast Delhi, broadcasting from his studio here in New Delhi. Not much in the news today, but I'll cover some items that are I thought were of interest and may have a, a, a twist in the view of from my perspective. But I'm going to focus today on a three-part series that I'm going to do on what most analysts keep talking about the way the Chinese think of, about the game called Weechi or the game called Go, something that was developed 2000 years ago and how that is you know, playing in every time somebody talks about it as we talk about India has been encircled by China. And I just want to clarify this to people who understand it and actually take it to a level what I call Weechi 2. Weechi version 2. The Weechi 1 was what the Chinese are doing and I'm assuming Weechi 2 is something that we can develop for ourselves. Right? So the, the first news was that I mentioned yesterday, Nawaz Sharif has got, had got all this uh, opposition together and uh, uh, to take on the, the Imran Khan and uh, the army but uh, today's report by Imtiaz Ahmed says cracks in opposition alliance with help from army. That was going to happen. Army is going to pull the string. But India needs to keep working on this with Nawaz Sharif. We cannot come out in the open because obviously India is a huge bogey. But we got to need to play this game and help Nawaz Sharif recapture the, the prime ministership. Then you had obviously uh, 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 give and take as they say, uh, uh, something that to pay us back. Pakistan moves in Gilgit, Balochistan. Void says India. Well, we can keep shouting that it's void, but just this is like we are telling them that what we did in uh, Kashmir is is our internal affairs. Just like I guess they can get up and say it's their internal affairs too. Then you have another article says Indian Chinese diplomats to hold another round of talks. Like I said yesterday, talks, 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 talks. My own perception, own call is not going anywhere. But interesting headlines by Manu Pavi. Attempt to overrun troops will be met with fire, India to China. And then it says Chinese admitted to at least five casualties, including a commander in Galwan clash. Well, they've got to still admit to another 130 more, 130 more. You have another report says can fire an extreme case, India to China. Well, if you remember yesterday, I'd said that Taiwan has said that they'll, they'll fire back and fight back if China was to take an ag aggressive posture. And I said India should do the same, should say the same. And that's exactly what seems to have happened. Somebody's got that to them and that's been made loud and clear. Now let's go to this lovely game of we and Chi. It's, you know, actually it was written in the Wall Street Journal in 2011 by Keith Johnson. He says it's a 2000 year old board game, holds the key to understanding how the Chinese really think the US officials had better, had better learn to play if they want to win the real competition. That's the pitch David Lai, a professor of the Army Wall College, has, has been making in recent months to senior military officials in the US and overseas, learning the ancient, ancient board game of Vichy known in the US as Go can teach non-Chinese how to see the geostrategic board the same way the Chinese leaders do, he says. This is Keith Johnson writing in 2011. Then he says the game already well known in the days of Confucius and still widely popular in Asia is starkly different from chess, the classic Western game of strategy. The object of Go is to place stones on the open board balancing the need to expand with the need to build protected clusters. Underline the word protected here. Go features multiple battles over a wide front rather than a single decisive encounter. It emphasizes long-term planning. Remember, multiple battles. Galwan, middle sector, as far as this, in this current conflict is concerned, you've got three or four things happening. Now you've got the middle sector, you've got Galwan, you also have a troop build up in Amna. So that's their plan, I guess. And But... This is, this is something I think we've, we've, we've planned all along, right? Then it says, it emphasizes long-term planning. And this is where over quick tactical advantage and games can take hours in Chinese, its name, whatever, right? It can take hours here, it can take months, and it can take years. And, 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 and that's what they're trying to do for this long-term planning, right? Then it says, Go is the perfect reflection of Chinese strategic thinking and their operational art, says Mr. Lai who grew up watching his father, who was, a, who was jobless during the turmoil of the Cultural Revolution, constantly play the game. 
he came up with this book and strategy paper in 2004. Guess who bought into it first? Mr. Lai's paper caught the attention not only of the then bosses at the Air Force Air University in Alabama, but of course, Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, who quickly became a convert to his way of thinking. He says, in the first days of the Korean conflict, for example, President Harry Truman sent US troops to South Korea and the US Navy to the Taiwan Strait. He had, in Chinese says, Mr. Kissinger writes, placed two stones on the Weichi board, both of which menaced Chinese with the dreaded encirclement. Thus, despite being war weary and impoverished, China felt the need to confront the US directly. Here, let me just say something. The two heights we've captured in Kailash Hills is you can kind of draw a parallel. They are seeing threats of encirclement. Expect retaliation, even though they are at a disadvantage, if this is if this holds true. Right? Then he says, but a strategy paper published later last December by the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party offers a different view. The anti-piracy operations can help China to subtly gain a foothold in the vital region. China can make use of the situation to expand the military presence in Africa. And that's what's been happening. And here's another one. One of Mr. Lai's first fans was Air Force General Steve Lorenz formerly the head of Air University, where Mr. Lai then taught. General Lawrence heard one of his lectures in the 2005 uh, summit, summoned him for a full briefing about the insights that Go could offer. However, as I feel, and as somebody then subsequently writes, he's saying comparing national strategic thought to popular sports and games is an oversimplification. I agree there. Then he says, Go is very useful device for analyzing Chinese strategy, but let's not overdo it. Exactly my point. Don't overdo it. And this is said by James Holmes, an expert on Chinese strategy and professor at the Naval War College. And finally, you have a statement which says he notes that China's amateurish diplomatic blunders in recent years, including bullying neighbors and trying to push other navies out of international waters, represent a departure from the patient and subtle tenets of Go. And folks, that is the crux of the matter now too, right? And let's just see, what did we start with, right? When we talk about VG, we started with a red here in Maldives, when we had Yami. You had red in Sri Lanka is what you say, which is uh, everybody talks about Raj Paksa. You obviously have a huge red here, which is Pakistan. Now with Oli, you, had a, you have a huge Nepal here. Uh, you had a huge red in Myanmar and a possibility and this is what they had and there was always a ch chance and there's always a chance that what I call the blue which is Bangladesh right turning into something that becomes part of this stone placement on this white map right over time I'll explain how this has changed and how Weechi version 2 comes into play. Just please look at these, 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 these circles. Some have now changed from red to what I call bluish amber. They're not necessarily red anymore. So let's just go down the ones that I think are somewhat of a one. First one is Sri Lanka. Articles that came out quite regularly. One first was Aditi Pardnis on 4th, 4th August. India worry prospects of a brute majority for Rajpaksa. Then you came up Rajpaksa clan set for landslide win. Modi first to congratulate Mahinda for his victory. Obviously trying to make a play. Then you had a report Rajpaksa cements grip, grip on power after a huge poll win. Rajpaksa in office India hopes to gain from its outreach. Oh, but then you know you then had an article Lankan workers stop work at, to protest Indian pro project. And this is after he took over. You immediately know China's hand in this and Raj Paksa's message to it. Then you have this really nice article by G. Parthasati. He says, India must grow its interest in Sri Lanka. What he says is, and this is important to remember, Sri Lanka cannot climb itself out of its economic debris right now without the help of 
the Western powers. And here is what he says is very critical. The US and its allies will have, should end their counterproductive economic and other sanctions on Sri Lanka imposed when the conflict with the LTTE was drawing to, a, to an end. Sri Lanka today needs assistance from the US and its European allies and multila multilateral organizations like the World Bank and Asian Development Bank to ensure that it does not land itself in another Chinese debt trap like it did. Thanks to Chinese assistance in the Hambota port project. Here, India comes into play. What is important, is subsequently you're hearing a lot of noises from Rajpaksa and his associates saying that Hambantota was a, was a big mistake and that they will not, where they will ensure that they will not, they will not play India off against Sri Lanka. Important point to make here, folks, is this, that we have to stop being a bogey as a bad man in Sri Lankan politics. But we have to draw the red line very clear. And now let's go to the other big red one. This is Nepal. And as Sh Sham Saran writes, drawing the line. Most importantly, the Narendra Modi government needs to shed its fond expectation that Nepal's affinity with India is because of its Hindu heritage is sufficient to consolidate our political position. Absolutely, we've been played against it. And you can see Nepal all over the place. Nepal stakes claim over no man's land. One injured after Nepal's police opened fires in Kishanganj. Nepal India dispute. Uh, Nepal India dispute spot sees PLA build up. Nepal said to send new maps to the UN. And then there's another article. Want to push for continued advancement of China Nepal ties. She. China reviews its Nepal rail project. Uh, this, this, this Nepal rail project to China is kind of stupid. It's a non paying bogey. It's going to drown Nepal in debt. It's a one way trade. Nothing's going to go that way from Nepal. Everything is going to go this way. And if India is not a market that's open, the Chinese will lose interest. And if it is for military purposes, well, it's limited because it's a sitting duck. Then it says China moves troops near Lipule Pass. Wow. Then you have national policy. Nepal government is promising money, land and houses along with Nepalese citizenship, most of which is believed to be funded by China. India, Nepal, well, if there is some choice. India, Nepal agreed to expedite bilateral projects and key meet, but things continue to be sad. Nepal talks on projects, that's okay, but then Nepal not helping in managing floods. Bihar, UP, CM tells PM. Then you have, but the interesting part is going to be the Gurkha. There is enough evidence to suggest that the Chinese army right now is focusing to see that if it can take on it, take, take, take Nepal, right? Take Nepal, it probably can get the Gurkhas to fight for them. And if India loses its Gurkha soldiers, we will have a void that will be difficult to fill. However, as in as Ranjit Ray writes, Nepal must think before testing Gurkha traditions. He says, he said basically Nepalese Foreign Minister Pradeep Gawati recent statement that the 1947 tripartite agreement between India and Nepal and the UK which provides for the continued recruitment of Gurkha soldiers from Nepal into the India and British armies is redundant has caused dismay in India. But this will also call dis cause dismay in the Gurkhas. It is important for us to understand that and I will not do the next version which will take the next step. Jai Hind. So as you can see, one of the things that has happened is we have been able to, because of politics, take away, uh, take away Nepal, to neutralize Sri Lanka to a lot of extent. Nepal continues to be where it is. We go to version. We go to section two tomorrow. Jai Hind.